So in our last video we installed the Brembo's from a 350Z into the 350GT. So um, they all fit really nicely. Uh, it looks good. Um, and I also got my high temp stickers come in. So we'll be able to um, install those today. And um, so with the first video we kind of rushed through it. It was kind of like an introduction video. So now we're going to uh, get to work on quite a few things. It's just going to set us up for the future. So we're going to do, oh, we're going to bleed the brakes. Uh, we'll obviously install those stickers as well. Um, we've got a intake plenum spacer kit that we're going to install. So this is from um, TMR Performance. So this is really cool. So naturally the VQ35DE, it kind of, not by much, but it does starve the front two cylinders a little bit of some air. And this is just a really basic upgrade basically which just spaces out the clamshell of the plenum you'll see it you know when i get to it but it just sort of um spaces it out a bit and just allows air to sort of circulate and um flow into the front cylinders a bit more easier we may as well talk about what the view is for this car so i always really like this car i like the styling i like the simplicity of it it's got just a real nice sort of in my opinion, quite an elegant look to it. So I won't be going down that same route that a lot of other people in the G35 community does, which is, you know, sacking on his ass, big wheels, thousand horsepower, and all that crap. I'm out to sort of make the car more like as if Nissan had released it today. Pretty much the exact same styling it has now, just a few minor tweaks here and there. And a lot of those tweaks will be, you know, We'll do a power increase, we'll be uh, turboing the vehicle. Um, but you're not going to hear it, it's not going to have a blow off valve, it's not going to have a really loud exhaust, we're going to keep this car really quiet. The idea is total drivability and quite unassuming. And so we'll do a lot of little things which will just modernize the car. So we'll get those indicators which, you know, sequential indicators, they look quite good. The rear lights, I think already look really good so we're not going to change those too much there's nothing wrong with those um, the car I kind of want to lower maybe like an inch but not much more the wheels they'll probably stay I quite like the wheels the standard wheels there's nothing wrong with them the 18s tires are easy and cheap to buy for them a lot of the modernization will happen in the interior as well so the interior I don't want like ugly gauges and all that kind of stuff. So what we'll do in the interior is we're getting a, well we've already got a double din um, fascia for this, but um, we'll be installing like an Apple um, CarPlay or Android Auto stereo into it. But I wanted to sort of match the styling. And then I was thinking like another way of modernizing the interior of a car is getting a steering wheel from a later model car and putting it in. So the steering wheel is quite cool and all, but it kind of does look dated. And so there was a steering wheel from a Nissan Duke, like a 2020 Nissan Duke, which has a really nice steering wheel. And I'll put it up so you can see it, but having that installed, if I can have that complied and like the airbag, you know, working and fine, then I reckon that'd be a really cool sort of modernization of the interior. Um, so. I've been just talking to a few wreckers about that. Um, so when I find that steering wheel, I'm sure it'll be cheap, so I'll buy it and just play around with it and see what we can do with it. And then, what else was there? Oh, turbo kit. So I got a guy putting together, well he's just talking about R&D into turbo kit, so he does a lot for VQ, so he understands what the VQ needs, but just around the project that I have in mind, he's, um, Going to put something together and we're just sort of going through our options at the moment because my plan was to convert this car to manual and so i've always had manual cars and always preferred a manual car but just i was finding it hard to find a manual conversion like there was one but it's like excessively expensive i think the guy's just dreaming i could almost buy a manual version of this car for that price so that's one option is just buying one outright i could perfectly find one and just having a spare engine or finding one that's been wrecked now it seems like whenever someone wrecks them it seems like 
wreckers up and down the country just get first bids on them and they just take them and then they part them out. So I go and contact wreckers about, you know, getting all the parts out of a manual crashed one. But every single person, doesn't matter how quick I am, they go, oh, sorry, you know, gearbox and drive shaft is already gone or gearbox is gone and so is the pedal boxes. Like there's heaps of things where it's, it's already gone before it like even hits the yard. It's just, I don't get it. I don't know how to get my name on it. I have said to a few of them, hey look, keep my name and number and just give me a call once something becomes available. I'll even go down and rip it out of the car myself. But um, yeah, it's just it's just hard. So I was talking to my wife about it and then she goes, well, what are you gonna use the car for? And I was like, cruising, road trips, you know? And she goes, well, if we're doing road trips and cruising, like it's a car, you know, for us to enjoy, then you should keep it automatic because then I can drive it if something were to happen to you. And not to mean like I might get incapacitated by something, but you know, if we're on a road trip and I meet up with some old friends and have a few drinks and I can't drive, then we're kind of stuck wherever we are. And my wife can't drive a manual. Even though she learned to drive in a manual, she is just totally not comfortable with it. So I am actually leaning towards keeping the car automatic, which is as weird as it is. But at the end of the day, this is not a track car. It's too heavy of a platform. Um, it's not a drift car. I'm not into drifting anyway. Um, so this car is purely for weekend cruising and uh, sort of road trips, you know. And so it has to remain reliable and comfortable and good drivability. When you kind of look at it like that, I'm sort of going, hmm, is there much point in even converting it to manual? So that's something that has been kind of hard. And it also changes the way that we'll tackle the turbo because the turbo kit that I had lined up with this guy, um, it's a mid-mounted turbo setup which goes along the manual gearbox. Whereas with the automatic, it's obviously taking up a lot more room. And he says he's developing at the moment a turbo kit to suit an automatic model of these which is something i'm keeping one eye on but i'm also keeping another eye on a you know a crashed manual vq35 d powered 350z or 350gt i prefer it to be a 350gt but if i have to get a 350z manual conversion then i will so i'll see how it goes if i have no luck with getting a manual conversion then i'll keep it automatic but we're still turboing it regardless it's just that at some point I'm going to sort of get to the point of no return. And so I'll just have to stick with automatic if I'm going towards the uh, the turbo kit. So um, yeah, without further ado, we'll get into it.
bit of a hiccup. I um, I went to this automotive place and asked for a brake bleeding kit and I've always just used like a clear line and a bottle and had someone stamp on the brakes but this girl was like oh well there's one where it's just a one person and um, I thought great. She goes yeah it's just like a vacuum pump and I thought cool. I've never actually used one but um, inspecting it and then reading the instructions it requires an air compressor and I, I just don't have an air compressor so um, I've got it started and I'll just have to wait for my wife to get home and um, she can sit there and pump brakes for about 10 minutes while I bleed the system.